Hey guys, Dr. David Jockers here, and today we're talking about four key strategies to improve your body's ability to get into and stay in ketosis. And so the first supplement strategy, and of course this is a strategy we apply with the actual ketogenic diet, but going on top of that is actually reducing inflammation. And so most people walking around in our society are in a state of chronic inflammation. And if you're having trouble getting and staying into ketosis, you may have chronic inflammation. So two key supplements to reduce inflammation, one is vitamin D. If your vitamin D levels are low, under 60 nanograms per milliliter, okay, again, that's 60 nanograms per milliliter, then you're gonna have higher levels of inflammation. So what I recommend is either getting in the sun 30 to 40 minutes, at least three times a week, high quality sun exposure on 60% of your body, or supplementing with about five to 10,000 international units of vitamin D3 daily. Ideally with D3, you wanna take it early in the day with food. Vitamin D can be slightly stimulating, taking it early in the day is the best, the best way, and because it's fat soluble, we wanna make sure that we are taking that with food. You're gonna digest and absorb it more effectively. So that's the first thing. Second thing is fish oil, high quality omega-3s. You want a purified fish oil. And so I recommend taking one to two grams a day sometimes. If you're working with your doctor, they may want you to take a little bit more. That's great too, I often recommend that. But a great starter dose is one to two grams of long chain omega-3s, and that's EPA and DHA. You find those in high quality fish oil or a krill oil source. That's gonna help reduce inflammation in your body, help you get into ketosis and stay in ketosis. So that's the first strategy with supplements. We wanna reduce inflammation. Second thing is we wanna improve insulin sensitivity and something called GLUT4 activity. And GLUT4 is actually an enzyme, a nuclear enzyme produced by our DNA that helps take sugar from the insulin receptor and bring it in to where it can be utilized by the different systems in, our, in, in every cell of the body. And so there are two key supplements that dramatically impact GLUT4 uh, ability, the GLUT4's ability to take sugar and utilize it. That's gonna be chromium and vanadium. And these are trace minerals that many people are deficient in. And so chromium, I recommend taking 250 milligrams with each meal. And if you have a higher carb meal, what you'll wanna do is take about 500 milligrams of chromium and you'll see your blood sugar will really start to come down and balance and stabilize and you'll be able to improve your, 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 your ability to get into and stay in ketosis. Along with the chromium, take vanadium. And vanadium is very powerful, insulin-like effect on the body. I recommend taking 375 micrograms up to 750 micrograms with each meal. 375 for a lower carb meal, 750 with a higher carb meal. Very powerful strategy to improve insulin sensitivity in your body. So that's the second key thing chromium and vanadium to improve insulin sensitivity and improve your body's ability to get into and stay into ketosis. Third big thing that we wanna be doing is reducing stress hormone production. With supplements, the way that we reduce stress hormone production is gonna be making sure we get adequate B vitamins. B vitamins are really key for that, particularly vitamin B5 and vitamin B6. So take getting enough of those. We get those naturally from, from dark green leafy vegetables, but you may want to supplement with a B complex. Um, ideally a methylated B complex is the best form or an active form of B complex and also adaptogenic herbs. Adaptogenic herbs are these certain herbs like rhodiola, ginseng, ashwagandha, maca, uh, Siberian ginseng, also called ulethra root. Uh, and different things like that. Um, and so these herbs are very, very powerful for helping to balance and stabilize stress hormone production. So if stress hormone jumps up because you're under a lot of stress, let's say emotionally, or because you've got toxicity in your body, or because you're not breathing well, then what happens is your blood sugar is gonna go up with the stress hormone. When you take these adaptogenic herbs, they help to balance and modulate stress hormones. So when you take things like ashwagandha or rhodiola, it will again help balance stress hormone, which helps you perform at a higher level and helps keep your blood sugar stable, allowing you to get into and stay into ketosis. So you use adaptogenic herbs and B vitamins in order to stabilize stress hormones so you can get into and stay into ketosis. That's our third strategy. So the last strategy 
is gonna be supporting mitochondrial formation. Your mitochondria are in every cell of your body. And the mitochondria's job is actually to get fat, take fat into it, and actually combust it through aerobic respiration and produce energy. Now the gatekeeper for mitochondrial function is called acetyl L-carnitine. Carnitine is absolutely critical and many people are deficient in carnitine. And so carnitine again is the gatekeeper, brings fat into the mitochondria so it can be utilized. If you're deficient in, in carnitine, your body's not utilizing carnitine effectively, then you're not gonna be able to get fat in and utilize it in the mitochondria. This is one of the major reasons why many people are not able to get into and stay into ketosis. So I recommend supplementing with 500 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams of acetyl L-carnitine on a daily basis in order to get into and stay into ketosis. Other things that are gonna improve mitochondrial function, alpha-lipoic acid. Alpha-lipoic acid is one of the most unique antioxidants that's on the planet. It actually is water and fat soluble, protects the mitochondria from oxidative stress and inflammation. Therefore, it allows the mitochondria to function at its peak capacity and it's able to obviously utilize this aerobic respiration process to produce fuel, particularly ketones, allowing you to get into and stay into, ke into ketosis. Other things are coenzyme Q10, phosphatidylserine. These are all powerful components that you can apply on a regular basis in order to, again, get into and stay into ketosis. So to summarize, four key supplement strategies. Number one, reducing inflammation. We talked about vitamin D and we talked about fish oil. So number two was improving insulin activity. And we do that with chromium and vanadium. Number three was stabilizing stress hormone production. We do that with B vitamins and adaptogenic herbs. And then number four was improving mitochondrial function. And we do that with things like acetyl L-carnitine, alpha-lipoic acid, coenzyme Q10. So those are gonna be these four strategies to improve your ability to get into and stay into ketosis. So if that's something you're struggling with, something that you wanna add an advantage with, I highly recommend applying these four strategies and I guarantee you'll see phenomenal results with it.